G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so it's Sunday morning here in Australia. You know, things are still looking pretty red. Again, it's somewhat confusing. Well, it says it's sitting uh, neutral, I guess, to where it was sort of 24 hours ago. Only a few minutes ago, this was uh, 1 trillion 933 billion, so it is still going down. But look, we can see a lot of red there. So again, it looked like a bit of maybe a kind of I hate these words sometimes, but a sucker's rally that sort of happened yesterday where things look like they went up a little bit and, you know, looking like there's going to be more downside. But look, we never know. We've just got to remain, you know, kind of calm at the moment. Things aren't dumping that much. You know, it's not like everything's just dumping 20, 30, 40 percent over the seven days it is. But they're, you know, like, you know, 17 percent over seven days. That's not so bad. That's not a big dump. That's, you know, just kind of slowly selling off, as you can see. That's not, you know, what it looks like when a market is completely dying. This is what it looks like when it's just having a healthy correction. When it's dying, it is literally dropping off by, you know, 20%, 30%, you know, in a day or two. And then it repeats over seven days. You know, it can lose a whole lot more. So for me, again, it's never financial advice. But my personal opinion is this is just are healthy and it's, it's hard to understand at first but it's a healthy correction it's what it was needed it was just over sold there was too much hype there for a little while those things can't be maintained and eventually you know i guess you know what they might call the smart money take some profits and then you know the new money slash the dumb money start to panic and sell at a loss or hopefully you know they may be still be panic selling but they're selling you know for a profit and then there's no real issues with that but that's what I think is going on. So, all right, BTC dominance climbing a little bit, still under 50%. ETH dominance, 13.7%, uh, so that's not too bad. And, I mean, gas prices, wow, I haven't seen them that low in, you know, forever, forever. So, yeah, I think it's because prices are going down. People are just using stuff less at the moment. You know, no one's really getting into... Uh, you know, all the platforms, you know, trying to do smart contract stuff. They're literally just selling. All right, so let's have a look. What has done well, though, in the last 24 hours? Has anything done well? I mean, you know, we can see Dogecoin is back up 12.9%, but again, that might be a bit of a sucker's rally. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, so there we go. Weave has done all right. Monero has done all right. Terra, Solana, Dogecoin, we spoke about that. Pancake, Swap, BitTorrent, and all the rest of it. So they're up in the last 24 hours. But again, it still could be a bit of a sucker's rally and it could just simply fall over uh, and go lower tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. My gut feeling is, you know, well, I really don't know what my gut feeling is at the moment. Again, we'll get to the Bitcoin chart and have a look shortly. And really, the Bitcoin chart generally kind of says where the general market is going to go. If it's traveling sideways, altcoins are going to rally. Uh, if it's going up, it'll drag everything up with it, but generally not as much as what Bitcoin uh, is doing. And then if Bitcoin's, you know, literally dumping, then everything else will dump with it and dump even harder. That's generally the way the market works. But look, a couple of good gains there. So our weave again, that's pretty good. And then we got some sort of, you know, roughly nearly 15% oh, excuse me. gains, which is always good in 24 hours. But really nothing too crazy except for that our weave. That's a really good gain. And, you know, Monero, pretty good gain. And then everything else, not too bad. But really we get into single digits pretty quickly. And I mean, you know, Decred only 3%, OKB 3%, Maker 1.5%. Don't get me wrong, if you're in Maker at the moment, it's, you know, it's doing all right. But 1.5% in 24 hours isn't anything that we'd call crazy. But you'll take any kind of gain that you can get. So considering the green's not, you know, overly too crazy, I'm guessing the red might not be so great. So let's go ahead and have a look. What hasn't fared well in the last 24 hours? Pirate Chain. Who would have thought, hey? <laughs> the old R token. <laughs> oh, God. Still up 338%, so whoever was in it is probably, you know, for the more than the last seven days is really, really laughing. Waves is down, Bitcoin Gold's down, Theta down, and much the same as the uh, upside. There's one really, really good one, and the rest of them are just pretty minimal. So none of these losses are kind of, you know, too crazy, except for the pirate chain. But again, you just got to jump to the right-hand side. Excuse me. Can't stop yawning, it's still so early. Yeah, you jump to the right-hand side and you can see what the trend is over the seven days. Most things are down kind of 20 
So again, for me, I'm, I'm just buying the dip. That's what I'm doing. I don't think this is the end. I think this is a really good opportunity that the market's going to come back and reset itself to wherever is the happy medium before it then starts to bounce and make its next way up. But I've got to be careful when I say bounce. It might not fully bounce. It might just get to its happy point. And then we, you know, slowly start to track up for a while, more kind of sideways than upwards, uh, before, again, the whole, you know, thing starts to build. Because I do think it's like a kettle starts to boil and all the rest of it. That's the way I like to think of it. So, again, only one really good gain and only one kind of, you know, really, I don't like to call it a good loss because it's not a good loss, one kind of really bad loss. I mean, don't get me wrong, they could be worse. 25% is not that bad, especially when you're still up. 330 percent but that's you know the way i look at it the 15 percent rule in 24 hours is for me if it's more than 15 percent in the loss it's a pretty big loss and if it's more than 15 percent gain in 24 hours then it's a pretty good gain but we can see generally the market's just traveling sideways although i mean it is up from the 1.8 that it was a little while ago but again it's down from the 1.933 trillion dollars that it was only moments before i started this video all right, let's go have a look at the Bitcoin uh, chart. So again, that 100-day moving average, that is holding pretty well at the moment. So, you know, have we seen the bottom? Has that, you know, kind of been the bottom? So the $47,000 mark, which is almost in line with this kind of green box that I put in here, that I consider is a really good support area and a really, really good buying area. It's not to say that it couldn't go lower, because it could. I just think there's a lot of support going to be in and around here if Bitcoin was to were to make it down here. Now, it doesn't mean it bounces, you know, exactly off here, sort of the $46,000 mark. And it doesn't mean it can't go, you know, again, wick down below this sort of $41,000, $42,000 mark. I think that's definitely possible. But we may have found the bottom. You want to know how we're going to know whether we found the bottom? Time. Time is the greatest storyteller of all. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to look back on it and to be able to know exactly what happened. It doesn't give us a good indication of what's about to happen other than, you know, again, you go on previous history. And this, this was almost as high as this. And we see this kind of, you know, fairly steep correction. It does look a little bit like this. And what happens when we got down in here? Hallelujah. We went back up higher. Another little correction went back up higher and that is what i'm seeing here i think this is sort of reminiscent of this again a little green candle in there a little green candle in there and eventually it finds its bottom and maybe it's not going to come down and touch this uh green box maybe it is the 100 day moving average maybe this is done this is one two three four five six seven eight so this is eight days this is one two three four five six seven sort of eight and almost you know again indecision candles here kind of spinning tops so this is one more day sort of so is it going to be you know it's not going to be exactly eight days again they're not exactly the same but is it going to be roughly this before we start to make our next way up so maybe we have found the bottom again tomorrow the day after and that will kind of tell i do think it's possible the 100 day moving average looks like a pretty good support at the moment and if not that this is really what i would consider a great buying opportunity but again, never financial advice because I could be completely wrong. All right, so that's the chart analysis. Let's have a look at some interesting stories that I found. All right, so lending giant Aave, they're set to launch a liquidity mining program. And can their governance token distribution help Aave overtake Compound? That'll be, that'll be big if they can because Compound's, it, it's up there. So with the liquidity mining program set to launch on Monday, Aave could be on the cusp of becoming the dominant decentralized finance lending protocol. Earlier today, Aave Improvement Proposal AIP-16 reached quorum, meaning that starting on Monday, the uh, 26th of April, liquidity providers and borrowers in Aave's USDC, DAI, USDT, GUSD, uh, ETH and WBCC pools will earn STR Aave rewards in addition to their standard interest yield. Uh, per AIP 16, providers and borrowers in these protocols will split 2,200 ST Aave tokens per day from the protocol's current 2.9 million Aave ecosystem reserve, currently worth nearly $1 billion. The proposal written by Aave investor uh, Parafi Capital's uh, hopefully I don't butcher this, 
Anjan Vinod uh, notes that the goal of the program is to drive lending and borrowing activity across markets, as well as increase the decentralization of the protocol's governance by distributing governance tokens to more users. So this could be really, really big for Aave. I mean, Aave is big anyway, but if they could kind of capture Compound, then that would be quite impressive. So, you know, if you have any Aave tokens or you just want to use the Aave protocol, you know, with the gas prices so low at the moment, it's probably not a bad time. Still not dirt cheap, but look, a lot lower than, than what they have been. Uh, and maybe they can catch compounds. So that's something I'm definitely going to have to have a look in a little bit later today. Probably when I finish this video. All right, 14% of Americans own crypto, but Bitcoin remains the most popular, shows the survey. So America's interest in the crypto industry has grown significantly in the past year. So even though we're having a downturn, a bit of a market correction, people are still buying the stuff and the smart money is definitely buying, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. Now this was found by a survey run by the Winklevoss, 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 Winklevoss run crypto exchange Gemini. Now we do need to remember it's somewhat biased. It's dealing with only crypto people. So it doesn't mean 14% uh, of Americans are still you know, buying crypto right now. It's just 14% have. Now, here's what's interesting though. Interestingly, Bitcoin has remained the most popular digital asset, but the results show that US citizens have larger on average positions in either uh, Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin. So there you go. They don't mention uh, Ethereum there for some reason, but they were saying up here that they have uh, significant portions of Litecoin, uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash. So very, very interesting. I guess people, you know, are paying attention that, you know, Bitcoin will perform well. I mean, it does perform well, but the altcoins generally outperform it. But look, Litecoin hasn't outperformed it at the moment. Uh, Ethereum has, Bitcoin Cash uh, hasn't either, I don't uh, know. But that's not to say they won't do it towards the end of the cycle as they have done previously. So people are out there chasing those big gains, but it is good to know that they're at least buying some Bitcoin. Uh, that's really the safest asset out of the crypto space. Uh, again, personal opinion, not financial advice. All, you know, all investing is risky. It doesn't matter. You know, you can go back to the traditional market. It's just as risky uh, as any other market. There's always unforeseen things that can happen. And, you know, the, they had the same kind of crash uh, back in March with the pandemic and all the rest of it. So it wasn't just, you know, crypto that got hit by it. It was every single market across the board. There wasn't one that didn't get hit by it. All right, moving on. So staking rewards for Ethereum. They are, you know... Here it says they will double to 18.9 billion by the year 2020. So I still haven't got around to staking any of my Ethereum yet. I really need to pull my finger out and get that done. I need to go and buy uh, one of those packages. I forget the name of it now, but uh, there's basically, it looks a little bit like a router. You can buy it and it makes it really, really easy uh, to stake your Ethereum. So that's what I'll have to do in the very near future. I do have Ethereum earning interest uh, on BlockFi, how did I even forget that? Yeah, BlockFi, so, you know, still making uh, some gains off my Ethereum, at least some of it, I don't have all my uh, Ethereum on BlockFi, I wouldn't put all of anything on any one thing, full stop. So, continuing on, S total staking rewards on proof of stake blockchains will almost double this year to 18.9 billion, up from last year's 10 billion. Uh, now this is predicted by a report on staking by Ethereum infrastructure firm Staked. So very, very interesting. I think this will just be the way that people earn interest in the future. That's, yeah, go ahead and stake it. And the more people that stake it, the less of it that's out there. Uh, and that will obviously, oh, excuse me, I've got to stop this yawning. That will raise the price. So yeah, Ethereum staking, just staking in general. I really do think that is the new way people are going to earn money. Uh, and you know, how much money you can earn, that is the question. The less people that stake, the higher the reward, and the more people that stake, then the less the reward. And at the moment, we still don't have that many people staking it. All right. Former uh, New York Stock Exchange president, he says crypto is the best kept secret in the world. Now, he also says, so this is Thomas Farley, that's his name, is all in on crypto, especially Coinbase and DeFi. All right, so we spoke about uh, Coinbase the other day. Uh, the price of the Coinbase stock la yesterday when we looked at it was down to $291. 
up from $430 though. So it could be a really good buying price. Maybe it goes down a little bit more. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I, I think Coinbase will do extremely well in the long term. In the short term, it might see some more downside, particularly while Bitcoin, uh, if I should say, because it has gone down, but maybe it's leveled out now. But if it continues to go down, I think the stocks uh, will get uh, cheaper and they could be a long buy. Uh, sorry, a good buy for long-term profits. All right, so crypto is the best kept secret in the world and maybe in the history of financial markets. I, I think you might be onto something there. You know, only time will tell. I mean, so far, Bitcoin has been the best, uh, you know, buy ever. If you had Bitcoin since back in sort of 2009, 2010, you are up crazy gains. I don't think anything has outperformed it ever. And that may still continue for quite some time. It may not. We don't know, but likely it's still got, you know, years, if maybe not a decade of good gains ahead of it because we don't have that, you know, major worldwide adoption yet. When that does happen, then the gains will probably slow down and you'll be trying to find the new next big thing. Doesn't mean there won't be gains to be made in Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, but it's just, you know, Bitcoin, again, once it has that real worldwide adoption, won't have the massive upside that it currently has. All right, now this is interesting because he said he was into uh, DeFi. Farley's interested in decentralized exchanges, so things like Uniswap, Pancake, Sushi, and all that kind of stuff. I, I thought there were going to be other things in there, but yeah, it's those decentralized uh, yeah, exchanges that he's really, really interested in. So that makes me think I might have to go and get some because I don't have any. I had Uniswap and sold it uh, on a double or triple or something and I'm kicking myself now because it's 10x up basically from uh, the price that I bought it at. But, you know, I still made money and I put it into other things that have done, you know, equally as well or not better. Some things didn't do as well, don't get me wrong, but uh, some things did. Now, last but not least, you know, we're all... You know, oh, and it's true, we are. We're all kind of wondering where we're at in the cycle and, you know, what can we sort of expect? I found this great chart on Twitter. So this has mapped the last uh, the last two bull runs. So the 2013 bull run, this is the one here where we had the massive peak and then this was like a 70, 80% dip. Uh, and then it looked like it was a sucker's rally and roll right back over to basically come back down to almost the bottom of where this was. And then this is the 2017 one down here. So again, we had a bit of a dip and it's always around about this time by the looks of it. You just don't know exactly when it's coming. And again, look, look at the peaks where these both got. And this one here, so the pink one, this is the 2021 uh, bull run that we're in now. So have a look at it. It is eerily similar to these other ones. And look, we were outperforming the 2017 bull run for a minute there. Excuse me. And that was not that long ago. And so of course, uh, sorry, the 2013 bull run, which uh, was quite crazy. Uh, and so we have had that retracement. Retracement here, retracement here. And now we're getting it here. And now we are simply sitting in between these two bull runs. So again, I mean, the crazy thing is, where is this going to go? Somewhere between the 2017 high and the two, sorry, 2013 high and the 2017 high. Uh, what price that is going to get to, uh, that is the unknown part. But at the moment, for most of it, it's been sitting in between the two. We got a little bit overextended. And so that is what's happened. It is corrected. And now we're sitting almost at the midpoint between these two. So will this be where it starts to rally again and maybe breaches over and comes down? We'll just have to wait and see. But it is basically tracking perfectly in between the two. So very, very interesting. Now this isn't mine, so I'm not gonna take credit for it. It says at the national route. So we go back and oh, I've lost it. It's moved uh, on from it. And I'll see if I can still find it. Here we go. So yeah, uh, it's root here. So at the national route, this is his chart. So uh, very nice chart. Uh, thank you very much uh, for posting that up and hopefully you don't mind uh, me sharing it. But look, if you wanna go out and give this guy a follow because that's a pretty good chart, maybe you should go ahead and do so because I'm gonna like that chart. Uh, and I may even follow him. We'll just have to wait and see. 
All right, that's it from me though. So again, we've had a look at the charts. We, there could be some more downside. It's Sunday here in Australia. So it's usually, you know, the Sunday in the States and that where, you know, we see the biggest correction, uh, the actual bottom formation for the week. But we've been in a downward pattern for a while. So we could still be facing more downward pattern. Uh, a more downward trend pattern, yeah, whatever you want to call it. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train at the moment, you are outperforming the market, so congratulations to you, and please let me know what you're doing. <laughs> Put a message down below. All right, I'll see you next time.